Hi again, Scratch Programmers. Last time we ended off with the Math Minute. We're doing a lot of addition questions and I said, hey, try adding some other types to it yourself. And hopefully that went well, but just in case it didn't go well, let's go over it ourselves together and see how we would do it. Now, if we were to try, like last time, we picked a left and a right number randomly did some addition, and then asked the user, hey, what is so-and-so and so-and-so, right? What is left plus right? And then we waited and checked the correct answer. So all we would have to do here is to add subtraction to it is do some additional logic to sometimes choose. Let me blow this up a little bit. Choose whether we want to do addition or subtraction. Okay. And I'm going to introduce a new idea here because this program has gotten a little long as it is, a little hard to see. So I'm going to add something called a block to it. And we're going to make a block. We're going to call this block um, choose values. And let's just hit OK. And now. I have this big thing here that says, hey, let's choose values. And then I have a little block in here that we can go plug in wherever we like. So we're able to make a custom section of code that can be used and dropped into other blocks wherever we like. So what's going to go into choose values? Well, it's really this section right here where we set our left and right values and the correct answer. And maybe even this question too right here, right? Ask and we're going to have to join. We can, we need to make sure that this here is always mm, able to change, right? We're not going to always have a plus sign here. So we can make a question or we maybe, maybe need to make a new variable called operator, operator. And that operator, we don't need to show it, in this math part is going to be set to space plus space. And then we can drop it right in there. And now our program works the same way. It's just that we've made one of the things that always was constant into a variable. So what is is always going to be the same. Left is going to change. Operator is going to change. Right is going to change. Question mark will always be the same. Okay, so our question can always be the same using this formula that uses three variables. And then later on we have to use the correct answer. So all these four variables are the things that we want to reset each time that we choose values. So let's see if we can copy that. So that's going to be a right click. If we right click, you can see duplicate. Let's duplicate that over here, attach it to choose values and take off the bottom that we don't need anymore. So we duplicated the setting values and then we got rid of all the stuff below it. And now we're gonna do the opposite thing where we're gonna add this choose values. I'm gonna put that in there. I wanna pull that to the side so that now we can take this block of our setting things, move that away and throw choose values back into that loop there. So all I did was replace choose values, or I replaced all of our set values with the choose values, and it's sort of just like an abbreviation now. We're gonna do choose values, which will set all these values to things we need it to, and then I'll say the question. And let's run this, and it should be exactly the same as before. We just reformatted some stuff, move things around, and let's see if that works. So I'm being asked, what is 35 plus 64? That sounds like 99. And then 40 plus 13 is 53, right? So this is still working just like we thought it would, 74. Okay, so now we want to make choose values change between say addition and subtraction. And I'm gonna move this down on the screen a little bit because I don't have that much space. And you might have more space on your screen. 
So just go ahead and keep using that. I'm going to move this down here to make it a little bit easier to see. But the rest of our program is going to stay the same, right? This part up here where we introduce ourselves, ask for the name, give them the countdown, reset the timer, all that stays the same. All we're going to work on changing now is this choose values part where sometimes it's going to be addition and sometimes it's going to be subtraction. So we'll go back to random numbers. That's how we choose what our numbers are going to be, our values are going to be. We can use that same randomness to decide if we're going to do a subtraction or addition problem. So we create another if statement in our control block here. So we say, oh, but we don't want if then. We want an if then and an else. Else says, hey, do this if your first condition wasn't true. So what we're going to do is if a random number is equal to 1, then and we have to choose between one and two. If our random number between one and two is a one, then we're gonna do addition. Else, let's do subtraction. And so what are we gonna do for subtraction? It's the same stuff we're doing for addition, but just subtraction. So let's duplicate this section, put it in the else section. I need to scroll a little bit. And so left and right are gonna be random numbers again. The correct answer is not going to be left plus right, we want it to be left minus right, and here's a little shortcut for how we can change that plus sign. If you right click on that plus sign, it gives you all these options again, and for the plus sign, one of the options is change it to a minus sign. And our operator is going to be space minus space. Again, the spaces are just so, it's a little easier to read right here, right? Number, operator, number, question mark. So now, half the time, one out of two times, when choose values runs, it's gonna choose a plus operator or an addition operator and have an addition problem for us to do, and the other times we're gonna do subtraction. So let's try that out. I'm gonna ask for my name still. All that stays the same. Relax a little bit before it comes. And now 62 plus 94, well that's 156, but that hasn't been our minus one. And now we get a minus sign, but it's just a negative number. Five plus minus nine, minus four. And now here you see we have a minus operator. So if it's 47 minus 57, oh, it's kind of tricky. We didn't always put the big number first, but that's okay. So minus 10, we know how to do that. And 78 minus 43, now the big number happens to be on the left. What's that, 35. So this works out okay, right? By just doing this if statement here in the choosing of the values, we're able to choose between subtraction and addition. But what if we want to do multiplication now? Well, okay, it's the same thing. Just instead of picking between one and two numbers, we have to pick between one and three numbers. But you see here when we picked one and two, we didn't really remember what we what the random number was. We just checked it right away and we knew, well, it's this or that. So we only had to check it once because we only had two choices. Now that we have three choices, we're gonna have to check that number twice. And if we check that number twice, that means we have to remember it. So let's go get a new variable and we'll call this one the operators taken already and we'll just call it uh, I don't know, type. Type of math problem we're gonna do. All right, we don't need to show that. But here, when we come to choose value, we're going to set type to a random number. And we're going to set it between 1 and 3, let's say. And so if 1 equals the type, then we'll do addition. Else, well now else, we got to check again if we're going to do addition or subtraction, right? So we need to do another if, and we're not gonna do just a plain if, we're gonna do another if else because we still need to do something if it's not that value. So if one equals type, then do the addition. Now if 
two equals type, then we want to try something else, which will be subtraction. We can do a shortcut again here, right click on duplicate, put it in there, and now we say if two is equal to the type, we do subtraction. Else, so now it's not one and it's not two, then we want to do multiplication. Let's copy or duplicate all of those again to set all our values. That way we make sure we set them all. And the correct answer is not going to be left minus right. It's going to be left times right. And our text operator for the question space asterisk, which is shift eight space is a good way to do it. Now, what about our numbers left and right? Minus 10 to 100. Do we know how to do all of those crazy multiplication problems on our head? Not really. I think most people learn the times table from 1 to 12. So let's try 1 to 12. And so here you see we're able to use different values for our different math problems because we're setting the values right where we set the operators. So let's double check. Let's go over what we're doing here. And you see why I made it into its own code section because it's a lot of code again, though it's really the same thing over and over, but just a little bit different. If our random number for the type of problem is a one, then we're gonna do an addition problem. Else, if our type is a two, we're gonna do a subtraction problem. Else, it must be a three, right? It must be a three. Then we do the subtract or multiplication problem. And let's see if running this works now. So let's say Chris. Fifty-six minus ninety-two. Well, that's a subtraction, so type must have been two, right? So it's forty thirty six, maybe. Oh, but negative, right? Negative thirty-six because it's too short. One hundred ninety-five. And then here we have our multiplication problem, six times 12, so that'll be 72. All right, so hopefully that worked out for you. We learned how to even make a new block just to organize our code. And then we got a little dog that's excited in the corner and learn how to use random numbers to change our behavior a little bit to give us different math problems. All right, you can add division on your own probably, right? Good luck.